Kwanzaa Coalition 2020 virtual celebration. Please note, we've taken every precaution to, to acknowledge COVID-19 restrictions, but that's not stopping us from bringing Kwanzaa right to you in your home. In keeping with the festivities, it is customary to have a candle holder or a canara. But if you don't have this seven piece candle holder, get a candle, be creative. But what's important is that you gather your family around the table and you come and you talk about that principle for today. It is customary to light the candles for each day. We begin with the black candle in the middle that represents the first principle of Kwanzaa, but the black candle also represents who? Black people. Black people. And then we alternate from right to left, representing all the principles. Kujichagalia, Ujima, and then Ujima, and then finally, on today's principle, Ujima. It is also customary for us to bring our ancestors into the room for the gathering. We recognize that our ancestors are a part of our living family. They're not here with us physically, but their spirit lives on. At this time, we are going to call the names of our community ancestors, following by which we will say Ashe. Note this. Whatever spiritual practice that you practice is acceptable. If you are Baptist, you want to say amen. If you want to say alhamdulillah. If you want to say I go, we are going to say I shake. So we're going to call out the names of those community assets at this time. Lewis Harding. I shake. Millie Charles. I shake. Sherry Parker. I shake. Ashe, 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 Sherry Marina, Ashe, Ellis Marcellus, Ashe, Carol Sutton, Ashe, Ashe. And all those ancestors, known and unknown to us, we say their names, we elevate their spirit, we invite them in so their spirit lives on. Ashe. And Kwanzaa just like all other celebrations, has its symbols. There are all types of symbols for other celebrations, but Kwanzaa's symbols have meaning. The first symbol of Kwanzaa is the mkeka, or a straw mat. So you can use a placemat or whatever to represent the mkeka. Then we have the kanara, the candle holder, which represents our ancestors and our parents' stock. It holds the Meshuba Saba, which are the seven candles, which represent the seven principles. We have the Mazal, which are the crops, fruits, vegetables, that represent the fruits of our labor during this harvest festival that Kwanzaa is. We have the Bunzi or the Mohindi, which are the ears of corn. They represent the children. Each house should have one ear of corn for each child in that household. If there are no children in the house, you still have one ear of corn on your Kwanzaa table because that represents the potential for new life and regeneration because each kernel on the corn represents a seed and the seed has the potential to bring forth life. We have the Kikombe Cha Umoja, which is the unity cup, which was used to pour the libations. We also have the Zawadi and the Zawadi are the gifts that are exchanged during Kwanzaa time. Now, Zawadi are encouraged to be 
educational items, books, puzzles, games, also creative cultural items such as a belt, a fan, a necklace, a handmade journal, all of those things can be used as zawadi. And if you don't have any money, you can still give the best gift, which is of yourself, through service to your family, to your community. And we encourage young people, our children especially, to do things beyond what is asked of you in your family, in your home. You may take the garbage out if that's not your chore. You may cut the grass. You may go and pick up trash in the community. All of those are gifts and ways that we can give back to our families and our community. So as we come together during this Kwanzaa time and all the time, particularly during the principle of Ujima, familyhood and cooperative economics, we'd like to be intentional about our thoughts and our spending, and we need to train up our young people and those who we care for to understand that we're looking forward to them building and growing our own businesses. We have entrepreneurs who are our role models, and all they have to do is just follow their own Nia, their own purpose, and create the things that we need in our community to make it bigger and better. Ashe. This evening's Kwanzaa celebration is being sponsored by Who's Coming With Me and the Ujima Economic Development Corporation. What I'm holding in my hand is actually the wonderful product of Doug Red, who was an inspiration for so many and certainly for Ashe Cultural Arts Center, which is where we're hosting this event. And I wanted to read this. He created all seven of these for the principles. Ujima, familyhood and cooperative economics. Familyhood is to raise ourselves, provide for, protect, respect, inspire, educate, and socialize ourselves to build and maintain our own stores and businesses. And so this is something certainly that black folk know how to do and have been doing as long as we've been here. But what's exciting I think about what's happening right now with this um, pandemic is that we had to, again, once again, reinvent ourselves and reinvent how we certainly maintain ourselves and how we maintain cooperative economics given some of the COVID challenges. And so what some of the spotlights that certainly um, C Freedom's gonna talk about is how businesses have done that. And so some of the segments that you'll see throughout this program is to kind of look at how businesses have maintained their resiliency, how they have not closed or perhaps have kind of minimized um, their work staff, but still were able to kind of hold the fort and continue to thrive and to have their um, businesses certainly continue to be part of the economy here. The other part that's important um, about Ujima is familyhood. And when we think about cooperative economics, it's very um, inspiring to know that it takes a village to do all that we want to do and all that we want to achieve. And what I don't have with me today is my surprise baby, Miss Elizabeth the Great, who is the epitome of what familyhood is for Nairi, who did not plan on being a mother. And so she uh, came into this world right as the CID, the Cultural Innovation District, was being launched. And for me, how blessed was that, right? How does God give you something that you didn't even ask for and now you have to nurture it? And the other thing that's really exciting when we think about how we work together in terms of the cooperative economics is how we use different resources and barter with one another in order for things to come to fruition. And certainly when you think about the Cultural Innovation District, which is a 19 block initiative underneath the interstate, that was an idea that was 50 years old. But we continue to stay true to it, that there should be a marketplace for this very special culture. There should be a marketplace for our ability to be creative and to sell our own wares. We don't just need to have the French market. There's so many different ways for us to interact with one another and to support each other. And so 
you know, when you get a chance to, to kind of take it what was reimagined for Under the Interstate, you know, this was about folks thinking about how they can create the space and reimagine it and make it a place where a marketplace could exist and to thrive, knowing that Claiborne Avenue was once the mecca of black culture and certainly black businesses. But this reimagining and this reinvestment in this area is so important and critical for New Orleans and for all of us as black people who are interested in equitable development. So I'm excited again to be part of this conversation. And the other piece that I brought with me is the work that community did. So what was important about us cooperating was the master plan. So there was a study that was done right after Katrina that said we need to invest in our communities, particularly our black communities, to make sure that they have the right to return to New Orleans and the right to stay here and to be viable citizens and to be able to do so by making sure that they had an economy to support them. And so what came after the Liberal Claiborne study was this master plan where the community got a chance to not only discuss what they want to see happen in terms of how we can repurpose certain parts of our neighborhoods, but how we repurpose it with black people at the forefront and at the center. And so this master plan is the community's work and Ujima is proud to be someone a group, an entity of folks who are committed to having this master plan come to fruition. Our largest partners, of course, is the Economic Development Administration at the federal level, at the state level, that's the um, Louisiana Department of Transportation, which is responsible for us having a 20-year joint use agreement to repurpose the space excuse me, to repurpose the space under the interstate, and of course our partnership with the city, and that being the investment in green infrastructure, which we know is a major part of how we redevelop, because New Orleans must learn to live with climate change, and of course this is a capital project um, investment. And so as we look forward to reimagining the space that exists under the bridge, as we look forward to encouraging the development that will happen all along Claiborne Avenue and throughout New Orleans, Ujima is the principle that would get us there, and familyhood is the love that will take us through. There's many things that we, you know, definitely should be working together on, and I'm thankful for this opportunity to bring us together. You know, we've been together for some years in some other ways, and, uh, and this is a way that we can continue our work and be more intentional about connecting and cooperating with the work as well. And so speaking of cooperative economics, um, you know, right now I have the put your money where your melon is uh, hoodie on, right? You have the pesos, the yen, the wine, the euro, your dollar sign. You have the universal currency symbol. Everywhere you go around the world, you can circulate those dollars uh, within the black melanated communities. And so speaking of community, shout out to Community Book Center, I gotta say that. Shout out to Ashe Culture Arts Center. These are the places that really helped me to find my purpose with the work of Ujima and the examples of, uh, selfless women doing work for the community and helping other people to find themselves as well. Um, gave me an opportunity um, to even become see freedom, you know? And so um, who's coming with me is one of my companies and it's a unity movement dedicated to supporting and uniting black artists, businesses, and youth. So I'm see freedom and I like to introduce myself as a black artist, business, and youth advocate. Um, I was inspired to create Who's Coming With Me after I lost my, nep my nephew uh, in 2011. He was murdered uh, at the age of 17 years old. And so uh, Who's Coming With Me originally started as a Stop the Violence movement. Uh, but I decided to make it more solution oriented because I understood that some of the issues that were in our community were more rooted in, uh, in us not necessarily having that unity and young people not necessarily having the relationships with the business owners or even with themselves. And so in, or, in a way to, to reduce crime and violence in our community, I thought it would be great if we could bring folks together and make sure that we empower the businesses we have and we empower the young people and the artists and bring us together so that we can thrive economically. And so a nephew or someone else's nephew won't have to get murdered for armed robbery, you know, uh, someone else won't have to get locked up for armed robbery. We could look at it on both sides. And so with that, um, we created the Ujamaa directory um, as, as a part of some of the protests we were doing um, and trying to pe stop people from spending money other places that was really, you know, aiding in the murder of other black people. So we decided to create the Ujamaa directory so that people could have other um, alternative places to go to. And with that being said, in the black community, we have beautiful businesses and beautiful ideas and uh, 
but we also um, have a lot of businesses and ideas that have not been developed yet. And so even though we know we have some, we want to empower those and, and be examples of uh, businesses thriving so that other people can know I can do it too. Because we have many businesses that we need in our community that we do not have at the moment. So this is a way that we can build our economic power. And shout out to Claude Anderson, who's someone who inspired me to really get a, I'm sorry, Dr. Claude Anderson, for inspiring me to do this work. Because that's, that's kind of how I fell into saying, OK, this is part of my calling to really educate us about supporting us. And so the model for who's coming with me can seem like it should be a nonprofit. I've been told left and right, oh, you should make it a nonprofit. It's not a nonprofit. It's an LLC. And not to say that I won't have a nonprofit one day, who's to say? But what I would say is that I'm dedicated to educating us about supporting us. I'm, I'm more interested in us intentionally doing this work and being an example of that versus making it a nonprofit just so that I can say, oh, someone with bigger dollars is going to give to me to do that. Let me be a small example within my community so that other people can see that this, is, this has been done. It can be done. And let, if, we haven't seen it been, uh, if we haven't seen it happen yet, then we still can make it happen. So that's what Who's Coming With Me is dedicated to. Um, we do work with uh, different artists and hire young people. And one of those ways that we do that is by membership. So Who's Coming With Me is a membership-orientated uh, company as well. One of our members, Community Book Center, uh, does great work. We, we even did, a, did really well selling our shirts and hoodies, and we definitely got to get them back in there for 2021. But uh, was a, very much so a big help and support with getting people um, educated and inspired to show off them supporting black businesses. Um, some of our businesses are authors. Uh, some of our members are our authors, so they get opportunity to use the space, the community space that uh, Mama Vera and Mama Jennifer has really like developed for our community to use, whether they're doing their book signings, whether they're selling their books there, whether they're doing events. Um, it's just a blessing to have these beautiful spaces. And one very important thing that Who's Coming With Me is dedicated to is making sure we preserve these spaces, making sure that we patronize the businesses and the black spaces that we have in New Orleans because we see a lot of them closing, and we don't want to have that to happen to these Jews that we have in the community. Uh, we use the example of Circle Food Store. Um, it's from 1938 to 2019, it was a black-owned, family-owned business. And so it's not that anymore, but we have the power to make sure that doesn't happen with some of our favorite places. And we have the power to make that happen where we can create new spaces and make sure that we are working together to make sure they are sustainable. And um, yes. I want to say something. What do you think is the biggest obstacle that prevents black people from patronizing black businesses? Hmm. So I'm going to answer that, then you say something. OK, so for me, and I'll let you answer if you want to. One of the biggest obstacles is um, we, we need to work uh, a lot of us have not really tapped into self-love in the ways that we, we need to. So when we look at our reflection, we don't necessarily see something as beautiful as we are. And so a lot of times uh, society shows us what beauty is, and that's what we take and run with it. And it shows us what's happening and what's popping. So we can say, hey, it's easier to feel like I'm fly and fresh in somebody else's name brand. I might work time for it and make a song about it. But it's not as easy to do that when I see my partner over here or my friend over here making really nice fly stuff. And, you know, so sometimes it's that lack of self-love in a way that we probably don't even understand um, or identify with. But I think that, for me, that's what I would think most of it is uh, rooted in, a lack of self-love. I don't know if you want to say something. I would, I would mimic that. I do um, agree that we don't often see ourselves the creators 
of the things that we want or should have in our homes. But I would have to say that one of the things that excites me about New Orleans is that anything you can get mainstream, you can get from a local artist. And so that is the excitement about the work that certainly See Freedom and Ujima and other organizations are doing. And since you use the word shout out, I do certainly want to shout out Brenda Bro and the New Orleans Redevelopment um, Authority because they took the initiative to recognize that we have to look at our commercial corridors that are all about black businesses. So Bayou Road, Old Algiers, Claiborne Avenue, and put money into these corridors so that we can market ourselves in a way that can compete with some of our other peers who, you know, kind of have years and capital to do what they do. And we're kind of starting with a little less footing, but nonetheless, our creativity and our resilience have um, carried on. So shout out to organizations like Nora and others who are making the critical investment in our community so that we can see something different when it comes to buying black, when it comes to investing in black and shopping black and all these great hashtags that we don't have to do, you know, just for the holidays, but we certainly can do throughout the year. Um, as they say, right, I'm 365 days a week black history, you know, so shop black 365, you can do that. This is not something that's hard to do. And certainly with technology, we're able to overcome that obstacle. And again, shout out to Nora for investing in actually the Claiborne Merchants um, Association to put together a website that's going to focus on specifically celebrate in this specific corridor. So thanks. Um, I just wanted to come here in a in a real time kind of way as one of the members of who's coming with me. Um, first of all, I, I found this looking for black businesses to support in New Orleans. And um, so I want to thank you for creating that directory um, that lists black businesses of all different types. We need that kind of information, uh, again, as a librarian, to put out there. People are asking, how can I support black businesses? Where can I find them? But as a member, I was uh, contacted by someone who saw your list. They were like, we want to find somebody in New Orleans that does spiritual work. And I happened to be on this list. And they found me from outside of New Orleans. So it's important work that you're doing for black businesses and for people who are looking to support black businesses. We have to get the word out. And we have to do it in a um, innovative and unique kind of way that reaches people more than just, you know, I paid such and such money for a commercial or I did this kind of social media marketing. I'm also um, participating and helping a collective so that we can all make it together. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Uh, one of the one of the uh, most privileged um, opportunities I have with who's coming with me um, is to hire young people to do work um, alongside me on their own independently. And so Mama O asked me a beautiful question um, today and she said, um, we need to talk after this to see how we can get younger people, uh, I don't know if she used the word hip, I'm gonna say hip, it's an old word now, <laughs> hip to supporting black businesses, right? And, uh, and I don't know what age group she, she's mentioning, maybe, maybe young elementary school babies. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, my son is no longer a baby now. He's taller than me, has a mustache and everything. 17 years old, right? But he grew up with his mom doing all of this work. And so um, even though I could, I could say I, I haven't seen so much direct, you know, evidence of every single thing, I know it's there. I know it's in him, right? And so one of the, the special gifts that I get to have is that my son has been uh, the Ujamaa directory um, uh, entry entry person. I guess that's what you call it. I'm making the word up here. But uh, that's, that's he puts the, the uh, entries inside of the directory, the data entry. Now, he doesn't like doing the data entry, right? But I love to explain to him, to let him know how important this work is. And during a time that with technology, I had a plugin that I didn't update, and it caused me to have to start over, right? He was essential to make these uh, entries get back in place, especially during times where a lot of people were looking for this. A lot of work I was doing involved me being able to say, well, I have a list of black businesses. And it's a lot of times it's uh, conferences or organizations, we're in pandemic, so not many conferences right now, but a lot of people I'm able to share the directory with whenever I'm doing work. I'm very intentional about any work I do. If I'm a part of the front end of it, then I'm making sure that we re redirecting as much 
as we can to the black businesses in New Orleans. If you're coming in New Orleans and you're doing a conference, hey, here's some people. And just because I'm a photographer and, film, and filmmaker, and just because I do have a black directory, that does not mean that someone else with a black business directory, someone else in photography or filmmaking is not on the directory. Uh, one thing I learned about when I was going through business class, I understood that the capitalist way that they want us to look at um, business was not the model that I wanted to create for Who's Coming With Me. That's why I created Who's Coming With Me. And to say that um, we need to look at people as our competitors, many a times the people that I admired the most would be classified as that word as my competitor. And so I didn't want to look at it that way, really, because I look at us being interdependent with each other and cooperating. And so the more that we are doing in these areas, we'll be able to thrive and grow different businesses. And, and, and again, I, I mean, look, I'll be the cheerleader all day. We, we have it. You know, New Orleans is what? The most African Caribbean city in the United States. So the, the blueprint is there. One of the reasons why culture was able to thrive here is because what, we didn't bow down. The culture was there, you know, so this 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 notion of resiliency and um, ability is already in us. I think that, you know, and again, thank you, Mama Vera, Mama Satwa, because what you all's work is to continue to remind us that it's already here, right? And for us as young people, well, not that young, but I'm a young person, you know, to continue to cultivate and encourage it in your son, right? Like data entry is not a fancy job, but it is the foundation for anything and certainly if you are a nonprofit or a LLC you're collecting data to get funds and investment for the work that you do so the data is critical and I'm glad that you're helping him to understand that and the other part is about our exposure right I mean again New Orleans is a place where art bubbles up everybody's got something wonderful going on so sometimes yeah we take it for granted but at the same time there's people in this work who are looking to figure out how can we I'm gonna use this word, monetize it, so that you can support your families, you know? So, and that is a concept that is not really ours because we're, you know, we, we don't wanna think about words like capitalism or competition, but green is green and we have to make it, um, you know? And so again, thank you for this cultural work. Thank you for this space and, you know, an opportunity to share, to remind ourselves the talent is already in us and to be able to call out the ancestors and the work that went before us. And that's why I wanted to say that this was, you know, not a new project, but again, it's a reimagining of what is already ours. And the directory is on who's coming with me org, and it's the Ujamaa directory. So you can look up who's coming with me org backslash directory. Um, also, we are working towards making it an app so that it can be something um, easy, flow free, and you can have it on your phone and you know tap it. It's uh, so that's in the in the works, and it helps for people to. Become a Who's Coming With Me member. Support, buy t-shirts, any, any of those things that uh, bring um, economic growth to the organization, that's the ways we're able to hire young people with our work. Um, and one thing to balance it out is that we provide those services that help to balance out other people's businesses. And as a member, you get to save uh, certain percentages depending on what membership level you get. So if you visit whoscomingwithme.org, you can learn about the Ujamaa directory, you can learn about um, membership. You can learn about our latest initiative called House Not For Sale NOLA as we're fighting against gentrification, the displacement of black New Orleans native artists, as well as the loss of historically black spaces. So that's whoscomingwithme.org. Thank you. Ujima is also um, online, so you can find us um, at our website, ujimaedc.org. We're also on Facebook through the Cultural Innovation District, so there's a lot of activity there, and also on Instagram, CID underscore NOLA or Ujima EDC. Um, and again, it's just very exciting to know that New Orleans is really at the forefront of cooperative economics and familyhood and continue this great work. In closing, I'd just like to add, Let's encourage our young people, support youth entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. If there's a child that has a lemonade stand or who is making jewelry or books or who are cleaning or babysitting or walking pets or pet sitting, whatever it is, encourage them. And what we can also do is to be observant of our children and look at what their talents and their skills are and draw out and nurture those talents and skills 
and they have businesses inside of them that they are not aware of. Mm -hmm. But as their parents and as their elders, it is up to us to identify that and support that and nurture that. And we also like to challenge black businesses to maintain a standard of service. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest critique we get from people while they don't, while they don't patronize black businesses. They say when they go there, the service is usually the service. It's not usually the product, it's usually the service. Mm -hmm. So I do know that many black people, when they go to white businesses, they may not get the best service and they go back. So that's something we got to mm -hmm. deal with. Mm -hmm. But I would like to challenge our black businesses to maintain a standard of service that will, not, that will allow us to say, I'm going back there. Because mm -hmm. when I went there, this happened. And every time I go back there, the same standard of service always happens. Uh, and that's uh, true also uh, to this, the intentionality right. and it's an experiment. Let's try this experiment in 2021. Mm -hmm. As often as you can, try to put your money in a hand that looks like yours mm -hmm. and see what difference it makes to a family that looks like your family or to a community where you live or where people that look like you live. And so at the end, when we come from Qu to Kwanzaa 2021, let's get the results of our survey. And my black cat, my black cat. <laughs> so with that, we will close out our Kwanzaa program with our traditional Harambe's. We will extend our hands, and Harambe means pull together, and we're pulling together to support black owned businesses and supporting the black economy. So let's all say Harambe, 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 Harambe. Let's pull together. Let's pull together. Focusing on black people extermination. We keep it balanced with that knowledge of self-determination.